Welcome to this web lecture on tools for sustainability assessment. My name is Arjan Kerkels. I'm working at Eindhoven University of Technology. In this web lecture, I'm going to talk about four topics. First, what is an assessment? Second, why use tools for assessing? Third, which tools to use for sustainability assessment? And finally, come up with a wrap up. So what is assessment? An assessment is the act of judging or deciding the amount, value, quality or importance of something, or the judgment or decision that's made. Well, that remains a bit abstract, so maybe it's better to look at an example. Let's introduce the case of cycling. Children learn to cycle at a very young age in the Netherlands. And learning how to cycle comes with continuous assessments which is great because it shows that assessing things comes natural to man. In that assessing, learning how to cycle uh, is built up of three different processes. The first one is goal setting. Where is it that you want to go? The second one is sensing. Are you steering in the right direction? Are you still in balance? And third is about acting, acting upon what you sense in order to achieve your goals. And we will see the three same mechanisms present in more complex assessments. So, for example, for sustainability assessment, we can do some sensing. Understand, try to understand the current problem, what is going on, uh, how are different effects linked. And based on that, we can look forward to the future, a business as usual scenario. Now, for sustainabil sustainability problems, that comes with an extra urgency because it will show that the current situation and the future is not sustainable and it will reveal complexity because sustainability is a very complex topic. So we really need to study hard to do complex assessments. Now the next step is about goal setting. It's about thinking of sustainable futures which are attractive where we want to go. And related to that is the concept of acting. Thinking about the, which path to take in order to end up in those futures. What are the first steps that we should take, if you're capable of doing, in order to head in the right direction? And then finally, there is an additional step. That additional step is a step of variation, considering multiple futures or multiple paths. And that serves several goals. First of all, the future is uncertain, so we don't know exactly what to expect. So considering multiple options is a more robust strategy for that. But it is also about decision making. We want to know whether the choices we make, the technologies that we support, the paths that we take are the most effective and the most efficient one. And that's important for decision makers. Now, this is what assessment is about. The next question is, why then use tools for assessments? Now, these tools can have three specific distinct, distinctive values. First, practical value. A tool comes with a preset model and often with data sets, data availability, so it helps you out to conduct the assessment. You don't have to reinvent everything or do it on your own. The second value is that the tools should be methodologically sound, consistent, transparent, they lead to comparable results if you uh, run multiple cases through the tool. And the third value is the social value. The tools should result in relevant, understandable results and they should contribute to change towards a sustainable future. Of course, you can read this as characteristics of tools or as requirements of good tools. Now we come to the third question. And the third question was which tools to use for sustainability assessment. And there it becomes a bit complicated. Sustainability is a very broad concept relating to different domains and we see a whole variety of tools being present. Now, what I will try to do for you is to structure these tools a bit by introducing a framework. And the framework I will introduce is based on people, planet, profit. People referring to the social, ethical issues, planet to environmental issues, and profit to economic issues. And we will do so both for now as well as for the future. Now, on top, the social side, what sort of tools do we have there? For example, a stakeholder analysis, which is very important. Stakeholders are individuals or groups that can act and that have an interest. They 
will face the consequences of unsustainable or more sustainable behavior. And they can act so they can take decisions. They can guide us towards the future by management, by policy making. So that's why it's so important to take those into account. A completely different tool is social life cycle assessment. It's about mapping socio-ethical issues over the life cycle of a product. Then we go to the next group of tools. These are more the engineering-like tools. And there we see concepts like energy analysis, material flow analysis. And these are great to describe technological systems, to describe production and consumption, but also to describe environmental ecosystems. Because also in ecosystems we see energy and material flows. And we can use that to understand better how production influences environmental systems, how it disturbs them. Energy and material flows are well-defined concepts and you can apply them on all variety of layers. So that these are very powerful tools and therefore we often see that they are used as the foundation on the more complex tools. A third group are the, gru uh, are the tools related to environment. There we see concepts like life cycle assessment to assess products, environmental impact assessment to assess projects, or ecological footprint studies. On the other side, economic dimension is covered by financial feasibility analysis, full life cycle costing, but also value mapping in support of sustainable business models. And that value concept goes beyond mere the cost, but it is more about what people really value. A completely different set of tools are the integrative tools. These are tools that cover both the social, environmental and economic domains. And the advantage of that is that it can show optima or trade-offs between those dimensions. And there we see tools like multi criteria assessment, social cost benefit analysis, or when you're more interested in dynamics, system dynamics or agent-based modeling. And when you're interested in uh, innovation dynamics, you might go for a multi-level perspective. A final category are the tools related to the future, future-oriented tools. And there we see concepts like uncertainty analysis, scenario analysis, and transition management. Now, the last one, transition management, is a bit of odd one. It's not about uncertainties, it's not about uh, assessing possible futures, but it is much more process focused. It focuses on the capabilities to handle the future. It's about empowering, learning and experimenting. To wrap up what we discussed in this web lecture. First, what is an assessment? An assessment is a process to understand the situation, act upon that and go in the right direction. Second, we discussed the values of tools and we distinguished between a practical value, methodological value and social value. And finally, we discussed which tools to use for sustainability assessment. We discussed different tools for the different domains of people, planet, profit. We discussed tools that are integrated, that cover all the three domains in order to show trade-offs and to highlight optimized choices. And we highlighted specific tools that address the future dimension. That was it. I hope you enjoyed this web lecture. Goodbye.